We're standing outside the health sciences, the new health sciences center building. Um, one of the features of the building that we're extremely proud of that's taken a number of years to get to is the installation of um, revered Okanagan artist Clint George's work uh, for Food Chief statue. Um, we're excited to be able to show it off and to talk about it and to have a conversation about what it means to Okanagan College and to our Indigenous learners. My name's Clint George. Uh, my traditional name's Wapapahuen, uh, meaning lynx. Uh, I got into doing metal art probably about 25 years ago. Uh, the first piece I ever built was a arrow, a steel arrow. I kept building more products like that, more arrows, more spears, then it eventually grew into war shields, steel war shields, steel feathers, images, and eventually it just uh, grew into what it is today. How it starts usually is some of my buyers will, will give me an idea what they want or maybe in the area, significant to the area. Do my homework if I have to, um, if I'm unfamiliar with the area or the traditions or cultures. And then I'll come across, I guess what some people would say is like an artistic visionary a moment where I start seeing how this is gonna look, how it's gonna be colored, things like that. I designed a Four Food Chiefs wall hanging. Uh, we have Bear up on top, Berries right below him, Roots below her, and ending with Salmon on the very bottom. So when I started visualizing this, I started drawing it down on a piece of paper. And once I drew it down on a piece of paper, we got the, the layout of the wall and how big they wanted it so then I started doing scale formatting and changing it to the size the height and everything I needed to be able to fit that wall I then go from that to figuring out about how much steel I'm gonna need um, and then what I do from there is I buy sheets of steel every single one of the images that I've ever created is hand cut free hand cut uh, I usually use my garage door quite a bit and lay down some tar paper and some chalk, do some measurements and I just hand freehand draw it on there. Once I put it up on the tar paper and cut them out, then I put the images onto the steel that I need and then I draw them out with a Sharpie, all the images and all the detail and then I'll take my plasma cutter and just start, just start cutting away. Once those images are cut out, then it's usually a process of putting on brackets and then final uh, touch-ups on the steel to get rid of some of the burn marks and the bluing. And then we go from that to a clear coat, so. Cultural integration has been something that the college has uh, looked at from a couple of different perspectives, both for the project directly and also holistically, um, connecting with the community that the, the college serves. And the project being a health and wellness center, basically for education, um, connects very well culturally um, with the indigenous local culture. The college really challenged and championed an idea of broader health uh, and pushed us to think about the health of the building and the well-being of the occupants inside. And that led us to a building and looking at sustainable initiatives like well certification, as well as the net zero carbon standards, but also an, a broader, even broader understanding that looked at indigenization and inclusion as part of our project. And so, the project did undergo extensive consultation with the West Bank First Nation, which helped to galvanize our design thinking around notions of weaving. And you can see that in the clear story mass timber uh, structure, as well as in the kind of tonal qualities of the exterior cladding, which references a kind of warp and weft of a, of a fabric. Um, and also in the, the landscape architecture where the plant species were uh, selected in collaboration with the West Bank First Nation uh, based on their traditional uses as medicine. So ultimately, this kind of lend itself to an artwork that would be inspired by the four food chiefs and uh, back to this kind of more holistic thinking and understanding of health and wellness. We were invited by the project management team at Faction to think about how we could indigenize that space. Um, and so one of the spaces that they said was, you know, kind of highly available and coveted was 
the main entryway where we would have the, essentially the elevator shaft wall where it was going to be essentially blank. And so that's when we started discussing, well, what would a piece of art in that place look like? Um, and one of the things that I immediately went to in consultation with you know, folks from the West Bank First Nation was, uh, wouldn't it be cool to put something that is uh, permanent and sort of in your face, like a, that wow factor? So when I had the opportunity to build a structure or a sculpture for the college, especially in Kelowna, um, one of the most important stories we have is about our four food chiefs because through those stories, the four food chiefs were like the ones who, in our stories, would have created us and who we are today. So each one of them has a significant story which, which stretches on many, many years. And as each one has progressed in our stories, they gradually had created who we are today to be able to take care of the land and everything. So it's, it's one of our main stories in our culture and tradition. And I think it's very important that when these images go up and any of the four food chiefs images go anywhere in the Okanagan or practically anywhere at all, that, it, that you give it an image that people are going to ask questions about. And in that case, it helps teach people on who we are and where we came from. The significance behind it is that each, each food chief uh, takes care of a certain part of the land. So the bear would take care of the four-leggeds. The salmon takes care of the water and all the fish and everything in the water. Uh, Speetlum, which is roots, uh, she takes care of everything that's in the ground and, and that has all the roots. Uh, Sia, she's the berry. She's the one that uh, takes care of anything that's um, fruitful and that's, that's like medicines and, and foods and anything like that that we would be taking and eating from. So long story short, each one of them would give a, each piece of them to one thing. The bear is one of our most significant chiefs because he's the one that actually gave his life up to create life for us. And that's where the four food chiefs creates who we are. And when Bear gave his life up to give to us, also he, he provided furs, oils for fire, things like that, whereas all the other chiefs provided all the same kind of things just in their own way. So, like I said, it's a very significant story for who we are. But we want our Indigenous students and our non-Indigenous students to go, oh, okay, wow, that's really cool. Um, I hope that it does spur more dialogue than just sits there as a, as a, as a beautiful piece of work, a beautiful piece of art. Um, I hope that it starts to sort of uh, frame conversations. Um, it is a health sciences building, so we want to make sure that those conversations, if we can, are framed around what does health mean in Indigenous context, like how does it look different in an Indigenous worldview. And so uh, we hope that those are the types of conversations we can have. Uh, we hope that's what it sort of inspires, because ultimately uh, when we have these pieces, it's not just about uh, sitting there, it's about learning and interacting and engaging. You know, from people coming in from uh, different communities or different areas of Canada, even international students or something like that, I think it's going to be one of those symbols that once everybody understands the context of the, the health and well-being aspect of it, hey, these days it's all something that we take very, very seriously and we all have in common. And uh, what better symbol uh, to, uh, to demonstrate that on a day-to-day -day basis is walking past the thing. And uh, again, just poking out, uh, you know, things that you hadn't noticed before uh, that put it right into context for what you're dealing with right now. I've always told uh, younger students and other students and other people that I talk to is don't ever be scared of your talents because you never know where it's going to take you. Whatever you're going to school for, just keep going and, and trek for it. I mean, nothing's stopping you but yourself, right? So 